Hey, welcome back viewers. In uh, today's session, we'll be discussing about the anatomy of the arm. And uh, to be more specific, it is anatomy of the front of the arm. So, as you all know, arm has got two compartments. It has got an anterior compartment and it has got a posterior compartment. So, in today's uh, video, we are going to discuss about the front of the arm or anterior compartment of the arm. Otherwise, which is also called as the flexor compartment of the arm. So, action wise, all the muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm, they help in flexion. So, it is also called as the flexor compartment. So, let's go into the video. What is the cutaneous innovation of this arm? So, front of the arm, it is actually divisible into upper uh, medial part and the lateral part and again the medial part is again divisible into upper medial part and a lower medial part. So the upper medial part is supplied by the lateral branch of the second intercostal nerve which is also called as the intercostobrachial nerve and the lower medial surface of the arm it is supplied by the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. So, this is a branch from the medial cord of brachial plexus. Now, what about the lateral part of your arm? So, the lateral aspect of the arm, it is supplied by the upper lateral cutaneous nerve, which is a branch of the axillary nerve. And in the lower part, it is supplied by the lower lateral cutaneous nerve, which is a branch of the radial nerve. Okay. And then next, the posterior aspect of the arm. The posterior aspect of the arm it is supplied by the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, which is a branch of the radial nerve. So, this is about the cutaneous nerve supply of the arm as a whole. Now, we will see how actually the arm is divided into compartments. So, uh, the arm, it is divisible into different facial compartments. The upper arm, it is enclosed in a sheath of deep fascia. So, as you all know, all the muscles of the arm, they are enclosed in a sheath of deep fascia. And there are two intermuscular septa. One is medial intermuscular septa and other one is lateral intermuscular septa which are attached to the supracondylar lines of the humerus. And by the presence of these medial and lateral intermuscular septa, this arm, it is divisible into an anterior compartment and a posterior compartment. So, the two facial septa. So, you have got the medial intermuscular septum which is present on the medial side. It will extend from this deep fascia and it is attached to the medial supracondylar ridge of the humerus. So, that forms the medial boundary. And then you have got the lateral intermuscular septa which is present on the lateral aspect. And this will extend from this deep fascia and it is attached to the lateral supracondylar ridge of the Humerus. So, the, uh, by the presence of the medial and lateral intermuscular septa, uh, you, the arm is divided into an anterior compartment and a posterior compartment. So, by this means, the upper arm is divisible into an anterior and a posterior facial compartment. Each compartment will have its own muscles, it will have its own nerve supply and it will have its own blood supply. Okay. So, that is how the arm is divisible into compartments. So, uh, see, this is the humerus. So, this is the humerus and this is the lateral intermuscular septa and this is the medial intermuscular septa and the whole of the arm is enclosed within the deep fascia, okay. So, by the presence of these intermuscular septa, the part in front is calling is what you are calling as the anterior or the flexor compartment of the arm which is shown in pink and the part present behind is the posterior compartment of the arm which is present behind the medial and lateral intermuscular septa. So, this is the cut section which is showing you how the arm is divided into compartments, okay. So, what are the contents of this anterior compartment of the arm? So, there are muscles. As I told you, it will have its own blood supply and it will have its own nerve supply. And there are few structures which will pass from the axilla into the forearm, which will pass through this 
anterior compartment of arm. Those are the structures passing through the compartment. Okay. So, what are the muscles which are present in the anterior compartment? So, the anterior compartment of the arm, it has got three muscles. Three muscles which are meant for flexion. So, what are those three muscles? So, one is biceps, biceps brachii and uh, second one is coracobrachialis and the third muscle is brachialis. Okay. So, three muscles, biceps, coracobrachialis and brachialis. Now, what is the blood supply of this compartment? This compartment will get its blood supply from the brachial artery. So, the axillary artery below the tendon of teres major, we call it as brachial artery. So, that is the main uh, supply to the arm. Next, now supply to the muscles. It is supplied by the musculo cutaneous nerve which is a branch from the lateral cord of brachial plexus okay so it will carry the root uh, value of c5 and c6 and what are the structures passing through this compartment so other structures musculocutaneous nerve will pass through the anterior compartment and finally it will enter into the forearm then you have got the median and ulnar nerves the brachial artery and the basilic vein and the radial nerve. These are all the structures which pass through this compartment. Okay. So, hope uh, this is clear. So, the contents of the anterior compartment, there are three muscles which are supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve and the artery is brachial artery. So, let us discuss about the muscles in detail. So, as I told you, there are three muscles, biceps, corpobrachialis and brachialis muscle. So, what is the origin of biceps brachii? Biceps brachii. Biceps means two heads of origin. So, because it is having two heads of origin, we are calling it as biceps. And because it is present in the arm, we are calling it as brachii. That is how it, ha it has got its name as biceps brachii. So, what are the two heads of biceps? So, it has got a long head and it has got a short head. So, long head, it will take origin from the supraglenoid tubercle. So, where is the supraglenoid tubercle present? You remember this scapula, the glenoid cavity of the scapula, it will have a supraglenoid tubercle and an infraglenoid tubercle. So, this will take origin from the supraglenoid tubercle. So, see, this is the supraglenoid tubercle of scapula. So, the long head is taking origin from the supraglenoid tubercle. Now, short head. Short head, it is taking origin from the tip of coracoid process along with coracobrachialis muscle. That means coracobrachialis muscle and short head of biceps, they are taking a common origin from the tip of coracoid process. So, here you can see. So, this is the tip of the coracoid process which is giving origin to the short head of biceps as well as to the coracobrachialis. Behind you can see the coracobrachialis, okay. So, these are the two heads of biceps. This is the long head and this is the short head. And after origin, after traveling for a certain distance, both the heads, they are uniting to form a single muscle belly. They are forming a single muscle belly. Okay. And finally, this is the insertion. So, this is the insertion of biceps and biceps will give a bicipital aponeurosis. So, we will have a look at the insertion. So, insertion of biceps, it is into the posterior part of the tuberosity of radius. So, radius in the upper end, it shows a radial tuberosity. So, the posterior part will receive the insertion of this biceps brachial. And I have shown you on the ulnar aspect, you can see the bicipital aponeurosis. So, this bicipital aponeurosis is inserted into the deep fascia on the upper part of the medial side of the forearm. Now, what is the nerve supply? So, as we have discussed earlier, all the muscles, they are supplied by musculocutaneous nerve. So, it is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. Now, what is the action of this biceps? Action of biceps is, it helps in supination of the forearm. So, this is a powerful supinator. So, it will help in supination of the forearm at the radio ulnar joint. And it will help in flexion of the forearm at the elbow joint. And it will help in the 
weak flexion of the shoulder. So action wise biceps is a powerful supinator. Okay powerful supinator and it also helps in flexion. Flexion of the elbow joint and it is a weak flexor of the shoulder joint. So if a question like supinators of the upper limb is given. Don't forget to mention biceps because this is the powerful supinator. Next see you can see here. So this is the short head and this is the long head. Both are uniting to form a single muscle belly. And finally, uh, it is forming a tendon which is getting inserted into the radial fibrosity and the bicipital aponeurosis. It is uh, merging with the deep fascia on the medial aspect of the forearm. Next, the other muscle. Other muscle is coracobrachialis. So, as we have seen, this coracobrachialis, it will take origin from the tip of coracoid process of scapula. We have seen it is taking common origin with the short head of biceps and it is getting inserted into the middle third of the medial side of the shaft of the humerus. So here you can see this is uh, taking origin from the tip of coracoid process and it is getting inserted into the medial surface of the shaft of the humerus. Okay, And uh, it is uh, being supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve and of course the blood supply to this compartment is from the branches of the brachial artery and action wise action wise this corcobrachialis it helps in the flexion of the shoulder joint and it also acts as a weak adductor of the shoulder joint okay so this is about corcobrachialis next the other muscle is brachialis so brachialis this brachialis it takes origin from the lower half of the anterior surface of the shaft of the humerus. So just below the insertion of corcobrachialis, you have got the origin of brachialis muscle. So uh, it takes origin from the lower part of the shaft of the humerus. Uh, and it gets inserted into the anterior surface of the coronoid process of the ulna. So here you can see this is the brachialis muscle. Okay. So up till here you have got the insertion of Corcobrachialis, below that you have got the origin of brachialis muscle. It takes origin from the lower part of the shaft of the humerus and it is getting inserted into the ulnar tuberosity. Tuberosity which is present on the upper end of ulna. Okay. So the nerve supply is this uh, brachialis, it gets its motor nerve supply from the muscular cutaneous nerve and a small lateral part is being supplied by the radial nerve. So mostly the proprioceptive sensations of the muscle they are carried by this radial nerve. So this is also called as a hybrid muscle because it is having dual nerve supply and action wise it is a strong flexor of the elbow joint. It helps in the flexion of your elbow joint. So we have seen all the three muscles they help in flexion. So that is why we are also referring this compartment as the flexor compartment. So this is the brachialis muscle. Next uh, what are all the other structures in relation to this anterior compartment which pass through this compartment. So as we have discussed earlier we will see the brachial artery. We will see the musculocutaneous nerve. We will see the median nerve and we will see the ulnar nerve. So, this is in detail about the anterior compartment of the arm. So, I repeat the anterior compartment of the arm. It is also called as flexor compartment of the arm. And it uh, has got three muscles. One is biceps brachii, corcobrachialis and brachialis. And the nerve of this compartment is musculocutaneous nerve. And the artery of this compartment is brachial artery. And action wise all the muscles they help in flexion. So this is also called as flexor compartment. So uh, in uh, my next videos we will discuss in detail about the musculocutaneous nerve and uh, brachial artery in detail. Thank you all for watching.